Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be taking you through one of the interesting chess games that I played off late. Now, I was playing here as white. I'll begin with the game straight away, not wasting any time. I started off with d4, open plays d5, bishop on to g5, open plays c6. I respond with c3, just playing standard moves in the opening, trying to develop pieces as early as possible. G6 my opponent, I play pawn to c3. It's a nice solid pyramid in the center, which is always helpful. Uh, and my bishop is out of, the, out of the pyramid. That's an important factor to be noticed. After bishop g7 by opponent, I play bishop on to e2. My idea is to push the pawns forward. Uh, sorry, h4 and then h5. And then I have a lot of attacking options hitting that h5 and controlling it. So uh, here my opponent responds with knight d7. Uh, the advantage of playing bishop g5 early is you are just restricting your opponent's movement. Otherwise, pawn to e6 solidifies the opponent's center. And because of the spin, opponent is not ready to develop. Also, if knight comes here, we are threatening to take it as well in some cases, which spoils the pawn structure too, of course, if g6 is not played. But here g6 is played, so opponent can develop the knight, which he doesn't. And I went with h4 straight away, open plays knight uh, g to f6. And then I play push the pawn forward to h5, open gets the knight onto e4, hitting the bishop. Bishop comes back onto f4, and then open plays pawn forward g5, attacking the bishop. And instead of uh, saving my bishop backwards, I went with pawn forward, which was the best move as well, h6, hitting the bishop, which uh, gets saved onto f6. But what this dal did is uh, occupy the square of the knight, actually. So this is not good for uh, black. And I got my bishop backwards now onto h2. Of course, this h6, uh, h6 is already safe now because no bishop is hitting it. So And that is a pawn which I always prefer having so that I can have some checkmating patterns on g7 with my queen eventually. If, of course, the open castles. Here, my open plays e5, trying to go uh, attack the center and break it open. I play f3, just pushing the knight away from here. Knight goes back. And after that, I take the pawn, open takes back with the knight. And then I develop my knight onto d2. Now, this is uh, also kind of weak for uh, white as well, because queen is going to come on to uh, b6, threatening to take on the pawn. And even e3 is weakened up because... Uh, f2 uh, is not there anymore. F3 has been played. So e2 is one weak pawn in the structure. e3, sorry. So queen comes on to b6, the right idea. I went ahead uh, try asking to exchange queens, which my opponent denies, which gives me a chance to, first of all, trade off the knight. And after uh, opponent takes with the bishop, I castle queen side. Now my idea was to just castle for one so that everything is sorted and then I can proceed for some counter-attack. Here my opponent gets ahead with knight to c4 and I trade and I got an extra pawn as well as a compensation. So I took it, uh, then bishop over to e6 by my opponent. Now, of course, I can't trade. So if you see how carefully I just went ahead, did some trades to make sure that this release in pressure, which was building up because of queen standing there, knights were there, bishop was there, so I just removed all that pressure by trading off some pieces. So it's important to how how uh, which pieces you want to eliminate when you are feeling the pressure of the attack. Here, a bishop comes on e6, hitting the queen. Queen comes on to e3. Now that's a choice. If you don't uh, move your queen from here, I can trade. Of course, take the queen for free. So queen trade. Sorry, I that was mouse slip. I'll go back. Yeah. Open trades the queen and I take back with the knight so that my rook is also uh, controlling the open file. And now bishop on to f4 uh, and I just move the king on to b1. Then the bishop, uh, the light square bishop pins my knight uh, because again king is behind it. So I went with g4 now attacking the bishop which goes back now. And then I just sidestep so that I can make sure uh, to use my knight in a better way. Open does castle, which gives me a chance to give a check as well and push your opponent king into the corner. After the opponent king is moved to the corner, I moved ahead with knight to e2. And op now opponent asked for a rook exchange. 
uh, and I took on the bishop first, so that that spoils the pawn structure as well for my opponent. And now I'm pretty much good in the in this position. Here I just uh, played a three first, making sure that there's no last rank weakness once we exchange some pieces, uh, and then opponent plays pawn forward, uh, making sure. See, the point is, if you trade trade here, uh, you lose the control of the open file. I get the control. So I don't want to uh, trade in such a way that open gets the rook into the open file and is more attacking on my pawns. So instead, I played rook over to d7. Now, the idea was simple. If you don't trade now, I'm going to take this pawn or the other one. So both are hanging if you don't trade right now. Or you just lose the control of the open file and move your rook passively onto b7, trying to defend the pawn. Then I can get my other rook as well, and I'll have some activity eventually on, on in the seventh rank. So here my opponent had to take, and once he does take, I take back with the knight. And now it's again a fork, which is hitting a pawn and the rook. And it comes, and now opponent decides to save the pawn, because it is going to be an end game, and pawns will be important. I went with rook to e1, placing my rook on the open, in the open file. Open plays uh, king to g8. Uh, here comes a check. Open moves on to uh, f8. And now I can give a check. I can uh, I cannot take the pawn because bishop is defending it. I have the control of the e file, so a checkmate can also happen if my opponent is not careful here. Suppose a lazy move, say rook to c6, trying to just rook, do the rook lift, loses on the spot with a rook on to e8 and that is because of this h6 pawn so h6 played a vital role in this game as well i went with king ahead just like a typical end game try to make sure that my king is active king to a2 open tries to play pawn forward i move ahead with the king and then just trying to push my pawns forward we trade here and now comes the rook onto the e5 e5 hitting uh, the pawn as well uh, and controlling this rank now open has to decide which pawn he wants to move or what does he do next. Open decides to place the bishop instead onto d3. And I uh, gave a check here so that I can take the c5 as well. And I took the c5 with my knight. And now that hits the bishop too. Here my opponent uh, places bishop onto c4. I went with king onto b4, making sure that my king is safe here. And then I can, of course, make some trades as well. Uh, and then open pushes f6, trying to kick my rook away. Rook goes to f5, making sure that one of the pawns is going to go. Opponent plays uh, now king to f7. I take on the pawn. And then uh, king goes on to g6. I play pawn to b2, a sneaky move there, kicking that bishop away. Bishop goes back on to f1. And I get my knight on to e4. Here my opponent plays a uh, rook on to c6 i went with uh, just maneuvering my knight because i my initial idea was to attack the pawn but since rook came up had to maneuver my knight again to to make sure that i'm doing uh, making some attack further so knight comes to g3 open takes the pawn here loses the bishop um, probably was running down on time too and then comes back hitting the rook i gave a check the open moves i took on a pawn first uh, so that I am ready to promote as well eventually. I hear open comes on the open file, but then it was checkmate after rook h5. Though that could have been achieved in the previous move as well, but I didn't see that coming initially. And as soon as I realized that was checkmate. I hope you liked the video. So the main purpose here was that uh, play solid, play some positional trades in between so that you are always in advantage. Uh, if you see, I was when uh, my opponent didn't blunder the bishop, still I'm like 4.3 ahead in most part of the uh, time. 3 3 advantage is always there. This just being because I have restricted my opponent's king thanks to h6 and my knight standing there on the face, and the rook is active. My king is more active. So it's positional play in chess. That's how you position your pieces better. And in fact, when the game uh, was in the initial stages, if you notice, I was way behind. I was 3.7, 3.8 behind when the development was happening. And making some trades, important trades in, this, in the middle game, where I can then consolidate my position, exchanging the queens to re remove the pressure. 
So all of this is very important how you go about a game. I hope it was instructive enough and it helps you improve a game as well. Uh, if not, please do let me know. If it does, definitely let me know. And I shall see you tomorrow again. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.